Hey guys, good morning. How's everybody? Happy Monday. I am back home, as you can see. Let me move this back a little bit. It's way too close to my face. Uh, but I'm back home, as you guys can see. Just wanted to get on here and I don't even know what direction this word is going to go in, but when you are called and chosen, free will doesn't matter. Okay. A lot of people get afraid. I feel like because God, um, God's word or let me, yeah, his word, but God gives us free will, right? But your free will doesn't override God's purpose when you are called and chosen by him. Okay. Many are called, few are chosen. But when you are called and chosen by God for a specific purpose, for a specific thing, for a specific calling, for a specific task, when you are called and chosen by God, free will does not matter. Okay. And I'm going to back this up with scripture, but there are so many people and let me just, um, this can go so many different ways. It's not even just for like God calling you to a certain marriage is ministry, right? Your marriage, when God ordains a marriage, it's a ministry. That marriage is meant to be like a, a source for other people to glean from, so to speak. So when God brings a marriage together, that marriage is a ministry. That marriage is to inspire other people, other God's other children by how that marriage is ran, by God being the foundation of that marriage, by what that union looks like, by that union um, looking like God's word as far as marriage goes, right? So being called and chosen goes so many different ways. Like I know people think, oh, that's just for if God calls you as a prophet or evangelist or a pastor, my face is itching, Holy Spirit, or whatever the case may be. No, when God called, not everybody's called to be a prophetic voice. Not everyone's called to be a pastor. Not everyone's called to be an evangelist. Not everyone has a calling on their lives to be in front of an audience, so to speak, such as a YouTube or a church congregation. Marriage is a ministry. That's a whole ministry. So that is very important. And if Satan can stop God's ordained marriages from happening, in which he does not have more power than God, so he can try all he wants, but he tries to stop God's ordained marriages from happening. That's why he sends counterfeits. And you have like some men and women that, you know, promiscuous and just doing the most and all over the place, right? He wants to stop God ordained marriages because... He doesn't want that marriage to be fruitful and multiply. That's more bodies in the kingdom of God. Like that's more like, no, he, he doesn't want that. It, his, his goal is to stop God's kingdom, right? And that's not even in his power, but in his little mind, he feels like he needs to stop God's kingdom from growing. So if Satan gets in the way of marriage unions coming together and in that marriage that those two people are to be fruitful and multiply and they have kids, their kids have kids, their kids' kids have kids, and God's kingdom just keeps growing and glowing, okay? It, it keeps growing and glowing. That is competition to Satan because he's like, nah, I need to stop the kingdom from growing, right? This is why he talks people into committing suicide, right? He talks them into committing suicide because he's like, I need to get rid of God's people. Like I need to take as many people out as possible and not have them connected to God. So that's his goal. But make no mistake, when you are called and chosen, free will doesn't matter. There's a lot of people that are going to suffer for knowing better, right? And when God speaks to you about his judgment coming upon a person, whether one person, a group, your family, whoever, he means what he says. He means what he says. God does not just take people through a judgment period just for the heck of it. He doesn't just take them through the ringer just for the heck of it. Many people that face judgment that God really brings low, well, all of them, it's for his glory. When he has called you and chosen you for something, you can go to the left when he's saying go to the right. Your free will is not going to matter because at the end of the day, you're going to end up in the exact location that he told you to go. 
And we can see this with Jonah. Jonah was not just called, he was also chosen. So when God called him and he decided to run, God had his way. And he was up there swallowed up by a big fish, by a whale. And he had to sit there until he came to the knowledge of who God is, repented for trying to run and went to do what God had called him to do. Jonah was not just called, he was chosen. So his free will does not matter. It did not matter. Apostle Paul saw in the beginning, he was called and chosen. So God had a calling on his life. Instead of him walking into the calling God had on his life, he was murdering Christians. So what did God do? Knock him off his little high horse, took away his sight so he can find his vision, the vision that God had for his life. He was called and chosen. His free will did not override God's purpose for his life. He had to lose his sight so he can find his vision, okay? We can see this on the opposite spectrum, right? Uh, and we can look at King Nebuchadnezzar. Rich, powerful, lives in a mansion, servants, all, servants, all these things, right? Very rich, wealthy, and just doing the most. The Lord gives him a dream. Daniel interprets the dream. And we're going to read a little bit of it, but Daniel pretty much tells him like, uh, God is about to snatch you up because you refuse to acknowledge where your help comes from. You refuse to acknowledge why you actually have these riches. Okay. You refuse to acknowledge God for who he is. So he's about to snatch you up, but God gave him a choice, right? God gave King Neville a choice. You can repent and turn away from your sins and your prosperity will continue. King Nebu didn't listen. So let's let's read this together real quick. Because it, it also goes on the opposite side too. It's not just for your calling into evangelism or your purpose or whatever. It's whatever God, let me just read it. So we're going to read from, let's see. Mm -mm. Hold on, guys. I'm going to read from Daniel chapter four. I'm going to read from, I'm going to start at verse 24. And this is when Daniel is interpreting King Nebuchadnezzar's dream. He said, and mind you, if you don't know the story, you can go read it. But um, King Nebu, make sure I'm on Daniel four. Yeah, Daniel four. I'm going to start at verse 24. King Nebu tried to get his magicians and his sorcerers to interpret the dream, right? They couldn't. He was like, the, the sorcerers and the, the enchanters and all the witchcrafty people were like, tell me the dream and then we'll give you the interpretation. Nah, see, that, ooh, that, that goes a whole different way. And I've said this before. God gives you dreams. Your dreams come from one or two places, your flesh and what, what's on the forefront of your heart or they come from God. Satan does not give you any dreams. Dreaming is a prophetic gifting from God. It's a gift from God. So they come from one or two places, your flesh or from the Lord God. Nobody of witchcraft or sorcery, that's all darkness. So that should tell you Satan can't give you dreams. He can't even interpret your dreams. Neither can his little minion. So how can he give you something that he can't interpret? Y'all, and this is why it's important to read your Bible. So I hear a lot of people saying, Satan can't give you dreams, baby. Name one person in the Bible Satan gave a dream to, zero. Okay, you can't add to the Bible. You can't take away from it. Like if they can't inter interpret dreams and sorcerers, witchcraft people, enchanters, that's of darkness. That's on Satan's side. So if they can't interpret it, how can they give it? Satan can't even read your mind. He can give you thoughts. He can't read your mind. So you should understand by now. Anyways, uh, Daniel chapter four, verse 24. This is the interpretation, your majesty. And this is the decree the most high has issued against my Lord, the king. This is Daniel giving King Nebu the interpretation. You will be driven away from people and you will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox and be drenched with the dew of the heaven. Seven times will pass by you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. When God puts his judgment on you, it's for his glory. 
So even when he chooses to judge somebody, their free will can't run from that. Catch this, you guys. The command to leave the stump of the tree with its roots means that your kingdom will be restored to you when you acknowledge that heaven, capital H, rules. Translation, when you acknowledge that God rules, okay? Therefore, your majesty, be pleased to accept my advice. Renounce your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness by being by being kind to the oppressed, it may be that then your prosperity will continue, okay? So Daniel gives him the interpretation and he's like, repent for your sins so that you can continue and live a prosperous life. You, you have a chance. He's like, accept my advice, repent so God can keep your prosperity there. Be nice to, to the poor. Be nice to the oppressed. Don't just, don't just have your riches and be self-seeking. Lighten the load for other people. Repent for what you've done. King Nebu did not do that, right? So let's follow up and we're going to read, um, we're going to start at verse 28. All this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar 12 months later, so a whole year later, as the king was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, he said, is not this the great Babylon? I have built as the royal residence by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty. Even as the word were on, even as the words were on his lips, a voice came from heaven. This is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you. You will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like an ox. Seven times will pass by until you acknowledge that the most high is sovereign over all kingdoms on the earth and give them to anyone he wish and gives them to anyone he wishes. Immediately, what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from the people and ate grass like an ox. His body was drenched with dew of the heaven until his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. At the end of time, I, King Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes towards the heavens and my sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. I honored and glorified him who lives forever. Y'all better catch that. King Nebuchadnezzar did not have a calling on his life to be a prophetic voice or an apostle or a pastor or any of that. God's favor isn't fair, but God had allowed favor to be upon his life of prosperity, of wealth, of authority. And he was using that to oppress people. He, he got big headed. He thought it all came from himself. So even when God chooses to judge, when he calls you to something, and he called Nebuchadnezzar, like, I'm calling you, repent, renounce, turn away, and you will keep your prosperity. But if not, you're about to be taken out of this seat of kingship. And you're going to learn that your riches comes from me. And you're going to use it to do good. God wasn't calling him to a, a, a set position. He, he had favored King Nebuchadnezzar. Favor ain't fair. How many of you guys has he told that this person is in this high seat temporarily, but I'm going to bring them down? And you see them building, 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 building. You're like, what's going on, Lord? God will keep his word. He is not a God that will lie. When he calls you and he chooses you, that's on all sides of the spectrum. King Nebuchadnezzar was not running from a calling of like a position in leadership when it comes to like the body. He wasn't, again, he wasn't called to be a minister, a pastor, evangelist, apostle, any of that. He was called to acknowledge God as God and to use his prosperity and his wealth to help people and to know that it comes from God. He didn't answer the call, but God had already chosen him to be a certain type of way, to live a certain type of life. When God has called and chosen you, you can't run from the call on your life. 
Many are called, few are chosen. When God calls and chooses you for something and you choose to do otherwise, it's not going to be good. We see that with Jonah. We see that with King Nebu. We see that with Apostle Paul. God will stop you at any cost. And there is a lot of suffering that's happening or about to happen for those that knows better. There's a lot of suffering about to happen for those people that know better. So make no mistake, when God tells you something, don't respond with, well, they have free will. So what if they don't do this? When God calls you and chooses you, your free will does not matter. It does not override his purpose. Yeah, Jonah had the option to run and he did. We see what happened. Apostle Paul had the option to keep doing what he was doing. We see where that led him and how that change came about. King Nebu kept doing what he was doing and we see how that went. Your free will when God has called and chosen you does not override God's purpose. So whatever God has told you, whatever he's told you to do personally, do it. Whatever he's called and chosen you for, you got to walk in that. Your free will is just going to hold you up and it's going to take you out of position. But that's the same for anybody you may be standing for. And this is not just for marriage. Anybody that you're standing for, anything that you're standing for, when God has a call on a person's life, when he has chosen you, their free will will not override his purpose and they will suffer because they knew better. And we're going to back that up with scripture. A lot of people are going to suffer because they knew better. Either they're going through the suffering now or they're getting ready to go through the suffering. So when God is telling you, stand in the gap for this person, you're like, God, they're not listening. Like they're still doing the most. King Nebuchadnezzar was still doing the most too. Look at Babylon. Look at all I built. Look at this. And just as quick as he said that out his mouth a year later, after the Lord had them prophesied what was going to happen to him, he was snatched out of that kingdom. And then he ended up acknowledging God as God. So when God takes a person, a prodigal, through judgment, and that's what King Nebuchadnezzar was, a prodigal, he was walking outside of the will of God, using his riches for everything else besides what God had given him or the riches for. So prodigal living is just wasteful living. That's what he was. Apostle Paul, when he was Saul, he was a prodigal. Jonah was a prodigal at one point in time. Prodigal is anybody that chooses a way outside of the will of God. They choose wasteful living. If you're not in the will of God, you're choosing wasteful living and you are a prodigal. But either way, when God has called you and chosen you, <laughs> you can't run from that. So don't allow a person's status and what you see and what you think God is not doing get to you. Because when God has told you this is what it is, God's plans does not change because man chooses to do opposite. God is omnipotent. He's all powerful. And for some of you guys, this is a word on both sides. It's for you and people that are connected to you. Some of you haven't done something that God has told you to do. But your free will does not override what God has told you, what he's, what he's called and chosen you for. And for some of you, it's people connected to you. And you're like, God, I heard what you said, but I don't see nothing happening. It didn't happen right away to King Nebuchadnezzar. It didn't happen right away for Jonah. It didn't happen right away for Apostle Paul. It happened in God's timing. But when God put his mighty iron fist over these people, they had no choice but to fall in line. It was time. God's divine timing is everything. My face is itching. Holy Spirit is upon me, guys. If you don't know, now you know. My face is itching. Free will does not override God's purpose. And there's a lot of people that are going to suffer, that are, go that are suffering now. You may not even know that they're suffering, but you will. There's a lot of people that are suffering um, because they know better <laughs> and they're choosing to be disobedient. But don't make, make no mistake, even people that are walking outside of the will of God, 
can hear from God. I know you guys think just because, oh no, he doesn't even go to church. She doesn't even go to church. She's not even walking around calling. She can't hear from God. Baby, they can hear. They can hear. King Nebu heard. Saul heard. Jonah heard. They can hear. And it, it's the same thing that goes for, like I said, marriages. God is not just one-sided. So if he had you standing in the gap for somebody or standing for restoration of your marriage, you were married, divorced, or married and separated, best believe God is speaking to that other person as well. You're not the only person in the know. I was listening to this young lady's testimony and I was laughing, not at her, but just at God because he's going to make sure you understand the assignment. And she was giving her testimony and she was saying how she was dating this guy, right? And he was a preacher's kid, like a, a preacher's son. And she went to his church and as they were on the floor praying, like kneeled by the chairs, you know, like back in the day, we would kneel by the chairs or down by the, the, the benches or whatever. She's like, as they was praying, as they were praying at church, the Lord spoke to her and told her to leave the, the, the guy she was with, told her she wasn't supposed to be with him, right? She kept talking to him. She kept talking to him and she said, God, and I'm paraphrasing her story. I can't even remember her name, but she said, um, God even told her, you know, if she didn't get out of that relationship, he would take his hands off of her. She still felt like she was so in love with this guy. She kept talking to him, but she even told the guy, like, this is what God said. And he was like, why would God tell you I'm not the person you're supposed to be with? Da, da, da. She could hear from God, even though she wasn't hot and on fire from God for God, she can still hear. And God had told her, get out of that relationship or I'm going to take my hands off of you. She chose to stay in the relationship. So she was saying how, um, she was driving with the guy one day and a car hit them. And I believe it hit on his side. But the car accident was a severe accident that could have took, taken her life. It could have taken both of their lives. And even in that moment, she knew God was warning her. I told you to get out of this relationship. I'm not playing with you. She still stayed with him, right? Right. And then she said one day, uh, they went to church again, I believe. And she said, uh, this girl walked into the church. She was a new girl to the church. And she walked in. She said, God spoke to her in that moment and said, that's his wife right there. And she's like, what, Lord? She don't even know this girl. Like, this girl is new to the church. The Lord told her, that is his wife. God was letting her know, I told you to get out of this relationship. This is not who I have for you. As a matter of fact, there go his wife right there. And she was up there trying to get close to the girl, be friends with the girl. And she's like, they just would not click, right? Because at this point, she's like, let me try to get to know this girl. They, God was not letting that happen. They just had nothing in common. But the girl and her boyfriend had a lot in common. And I believe she even told her boyfriend, like, guys, say that's your wife or whatever. And he thought it was funny. Fast forward, she, the girl ended up getting out of the relationship and God began to bless her life. And her boyfriend is now with the girl that the Lord said was his wife. People will suffer for knowing better. People will suffer because they know better. God is not playing. When he tells you something and he will tell you secret things you did not know. Just like he told her, that's his wife right now. She was like, nah, what, what am I hearing? You hearing God? She knew she was hearing from God. And that's what her ex is now with that girl. And she's moved on with her life. She is now on YouTube, uh, 
I don't think she's a prophetic voice. I don't think that's what her channel was about, but she was giving her testimony on her channel. But now she's walking according to God's call for her life. I can't even get my words out. It's too early. But when you are called and chosen, free will does not override God's purpose. And it's a dangerous thing when he takes his hands off of you because he will allow hit after hit after hit until you fall in alignment with him. Free will does not override his purpose. So if you're standing for somebody, if God has you standing for a marriage, standing for restoration of your marriage, keep standing because free will does not override God's purpose. And if God told you it will be, it will be. But also if you are a person that's in a relationship and God done told you that's not your husband, that's not your wife, get your butt out of it. Because when God takes his hands off of you, that is a dangerous place to be in. It's dangerous. God is not playing. You will suffer for knowing better. And let's back this up with scripture as well. I'm going to read from James 4, verse 17, KJV. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Luke 12, 47. That servant who knows his master's will but does not get ready or follow his instructions will be beaten with many blows. John 9, 41. If you were blind, Jesus replied, you would not be guilty of sin. But since you claim you can see, your guilt remains. 2 Peter 2, verse 21, it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then turn away. Let me start over, guys. It's early. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then to turn away from the holy commandment passed on to them. When you know better and you don't do better, suffering will be your portion and his word tells us that so just because you think a person isn't doing anything god told them to do and it's their free will so what god spoke to you is not going to come to pass lies when god has called and chosen you your free will does not override god's purpose and you will keep getting hit with blow after blow after blow until you understand who God is and that he means business and that he is Lord of Lord, God, Lord of Lords, God of all gods. He's sovereign. So their free will does not override God's purpose. Whatever God told you it will be is what it will be. And if you are the person that this word is for, get out of that situation close that door because by you knowing better and not doing what God said, you're asking for suffering to be your portion. And God's will is what will prevail. You can run all day long, Jonah. You can ride on that high horse all day long, Apostle Paul. You can think everything you have is all you, King Nebu. But God's will is what will be done. So that's it for this word, guys. I have so many things to release, but this is just what was impressed on my heart now to release to you guys. But if you've been waiting for someone, standing for someone, keep doing what God said. At his divine time is when it will happen. But trust and believe when God has called and chosen a person for something, free will does not override that. Yeah, he gives you free will. Mm -hmm. Jonah got to partake in his free will. So did Apostle Paul. So did King Nebu. But what happened at the end? They all end up doing what God told them to do. <laughs> so that is the word, guys. I love you. Happy Monday. I'm sure we'll talk soon, but that's the word, y'all. Do what God told you to do. And if you have been doing what God has told you to do and this word is for someone you're divinely connected to and you feel like, you know, nothing's going to happen because they have free will. Again, free will does not override God's purpose. So that's the word, guys. I love you and have a great day. Bye.